What if I told you that you can go from a beginner to a pro hacker in the next 8 minutes? In this video, I'll reveal the best hacking tools that pro hackers use that will fast track your journey towards becoming a professional hacker. Before I start revealing the best tools for hacking, we need to cover some basics. You see, the best hackers are those who work after a tried and tested process to increase the chance of reaching their target objectives. Whether it's to successfully perform social engineering, crack a difficult password, or hacking a remote computer, you'll need to know the process, the tools, and the secret tricks that will turn you from a noob to a pro hacker as fast as possible. Let's get started. Disclaimer. This video solely focuses on teaching ethical hacking hackers and security professionals about the best hacking tools and does not provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to use them. Black hat hacking is highly discouraged and can result in serious legal consequences. The first thing you need is to know the process. A professional hacking process consists of several phases and in each phase specific tools are used that I will share during this video along with some secret tricks that will put you ahead of 99% of hackers. The hacking process consists of reconnaissance, scanning, gaining access, maintaining access, covering tracks and actions on objectives. Let's dive deeper into these steps. Phase 1. Reconnaissance. The first step in any hacking attempt is reconnaissance, also known as footprinting. During this phase, the hacker gathers as much information as possible about the target system. This includes identifying IP addresses, domain details, network infrastructure, and possible entry point. The goal is to map out the target environment to identify vulnerabilities without touching the target system directly. The best tools used in this step is Nmap, Shodan, and Google Dorks. Nmap is a free and open source utility widely used for network discovery and security auditing. Network administrators and security professionals primarily use it to identify what devices are running on their systems, discover open ports and services, and detect security risks. Nmap uses raw IP packets in clever ways to determine which hosts are available on the network, what services those hosts are running, what operating systems and OS versions they are running, and what type of packet filters firewalls are in use. Its powerful features allow users to scan large networks or just single hosts. Nmap's capabilities make it an essential tool in any hacker's toolkit, providing a foundational overview that guides further security assessment and attack strategies. The next tool is even more impressive. Shodan is often referred to as the search engine for hackers though it is also incredibly useful for security analysts and network administrators. Unlike Google, which crawls the internet for websites, Shodan scans for devices connected to the internet, making it possible to find everything from webcams to water treatment facilities. It can be used to discover which of your target's devices are connected to the internet, where they are located, and who is using them. Shodan provides valuable data that helps security professionals discover the presence of potentially vulnerable systems connected to the internet, which could be targets for exploitation. Did you know you can even use Google for this recon? Let me show you how. Google Dorks isn't a tool, but rather a technique used to leverage the mother of all search engines Google to uncover security vulnerabilities. This technique involves using advanced search operators in Google to locate specific strings of text within search queries. For example, using Google Dorks, a security researcher can find exposed sensitive documents, misconfigured website databases, and access to public cameras. These dorks are essentially simple commands that can be used to search for a plethora of data, including server error messages, which reveal too much information and can lead to further exploitation. The effectiveness of Google Dorks in finding exposed information serves as a reminder of the importance of securing servers and applications to protect against potential attackers who might use similar techniques. After the initial recon, we are ready for the next step. Phase 2. Scanning. Following reconnaissance. The next step is to actively engage with the system by scanning. This phase involves using automated tools to send data to systems and analyze the responses received. Scanning helps in identifying live hosts, open ports, and the services running on servers. It's essential for confirming the data gathered during the reconnaissance phase and setting the stage for the next steps. Tools used in this phase is Nmap, Wireshark, and Nessus. Nmap is not just a tool for simple network mapping and port discovery. It can be used to perform more complex and stealthy operations. Let me share three secrets about Nmap. Zombie Scan. This technique allows a hacker to scan a target while masking their own IP address, using a third party's IP to send packets to the target. This can make it appear that the fake host is the one doing the scanning, thereby hiding the actual scanner's presence. This is real ninja stuff. Version detection. Using the SV option, Nmap can be used to determine service information about open ports such as the software version and type of the services running. This information can be critical for identifying specific vulnerabilities known to affect particular versions of software. Script scanning. Nmap comes with a powerful scripting engine called NSE. Nmap scripting engine that can be used to automate a wide variety of networking tasks. These scripts can perform advanced tasks like vulnerability detection, 
backdoor detection, and more, making Nmap not just a scanning tool, but a powerful network security tool. The next powerful tool you must know is Wireshark. Wireshark is widely known for capturing network packets, but it can be used for deeper analysis in ways that many users may not realize. Filter expressions. Learning and using Wireshark's filtering expressions can significantly enhance its utility. For example, you can filter by protocol such as TCP, UDP, ICMP, also by source and destination IPs, ports, and even by specific packet properties. Follow TCP stream. This feature allows users to reconstruct the actual data streams from captured packets. It can be extremely useful for analyzing what data is being transmitted over a connection, potentially exposing sensitive information like passwords or confidential data being sent in plain text. Decrypting TLS. If you have access to the server's private key, Wireshark can decrypt TLS encrypted traffic, allowing you to analyze encrypted data transferred over secure connections. Another useful tool to learn is Nessus. It is one of the most widely used vulnerability scanners, and it offers several advanced features that can help uncover deep vulnerabilities in a network. Configuration audit. Beyond just scanning for known vulnerabilities, Nessus can be configured to perform comprehensive configuration audits using compliance checks to ensure that systems are configured securely according to industry best practices. Customized scanning. Users can write their own Nessus plugins or modify existing ones. This can be particularly useful for tailored security assessments where specific and non-standard vulnerabilities need to be tested. Scheduled scanning, which can automatically monitor the network for new vulnerabilities as they emerge without manual intervention. This feature ensures that the network is continually monitored, which is crucial for maintaining long-term security postures. Now it's starting to get interesting. The next phase is crucial. Phase 3. Gaining access. This phase involves exploiting vulnerabilities discovered during the scanning phase. Hackers attempt to exploit these vulnerabilities to enter the system. Techniques could involve the use of buffer overflows, SQL injection, or cross-site scripting, depending on the nature of the target system's weaknesses. Some powerful tools in this phase is Metasploit, SQL Map, and John the Ripper. Metasploit is more than just a tool for executing exploits. It is a comprehensive framework that can be used for custom exploit development, reconnaissance, and post-exploitation activities. Meter Preter Payloads One of the most powerful features of Metasploit is its Meter Preter Payload, which provides a dynamic and interactive shell on the target machine. Meter Preter allows users to migrate between processes, upload and download files, manipulate the system registry, capture screenshots and webcam shots, and even pivot to other networks. Auxiliary Scanners Metasploit includes a variety of auxiliary modules that can be used for tasks like scanning other systems on a network, performing denial of service attacks, and sniffing network traffic. These modules can help prepare the environment for more effective exploitation. Exploit Customization Advanced users can modify existing exploits or create their own to tailor them to specific target environments. This customization can significantly increase the success rate against well-protected targets where generic exploits might fail. SQL Map automates the process of detecting and exploiting SQL injection flaws, but it also offers functionalities that can deepen the impact of SQL injection discovery. Database fingerprinting. SQL Map can perform detailed database fingerprinting to determine the backend database management system, version, and even configuration. This precise knowledge allows for more targeted attacks. Retrieving hidden data. Beyond just exploiting SQL injections, SQL Map can retrieve data from other database tables that aren't directly used by the web application uncovering hidden or more sensitive information that wasn't intended to be exposed. The next one on the list is legendary and can hack any password. John the Ripper is renowned for its password cracking capabilities, but it also includes features that can optimize and enhance the cracking process. Custom rules. John supports rule-based attack mode which allows users to specify custom rules for password cracking. This can be incredibly effective when you have knowledge of the password policies used by an organization, enabling you to tailor your attacks to conform to those policies. Incremental mode. This mode Mode uses brute force but intelligently, adapting the test passwords over time. By learning more about the passwords in a given system, John can optimize future attempts, making the brute force attack faster and more effective. Parallel processing. John the Ripper can take advantage of multiple CPUs and GPU acceleration to increase the speed of the cracking process significantly. This is crucial for practical password attacks as modern passwords are complex and require substantial computational power to break. Utilizing these tools with these advanced techniques allows hackers to perform deep security assessments, identify vulnerabilities, and demonstrate the potential impact of these vulnerabilities. This in turn can lead to stronger, more secure systems. But everything you have learned thus far is useless if you lose your hard-earned access to target systems. That's why the next phase is so important. Introducing phase four, maintaining access. Once access is gained, the hacker seeks to maintain it by securing a way to return to the system. This often involves creating backdoors and trojans. The purpose of this phase is to ensure the hacker can re-enter the system easily and remain undetected to gather more extensive data or await the optimal time for launching a further 
further attack. Some of the most powerful tools for this Cobalt Strike and Mimikai. Cobalt Strike is a penetration testing tool which provides an attacker with a powerful suite of capabilities designed to mimic a genuine cyber attack. It's particularly renowned for its advanced command and control C2 features and its ability to simulate a full attack life cycle from spear phishing to persistent access and data exfiltration. Beaconing capability, Cobalt Strikes. Beacon is a lightweight payload designed to execute commands, deliver files, and return outputs. It can communicate with the attacker's server in a low and slow manner to evade detection, mimicking regular network traffic and staying under the radar. Listener Profiles Cobalt Strike allows the creation of customized listener profiles, which can mimic legitimate services and protocols to blend in with normal network traffic. This can help in evading network-based intrusion detection systems IDS, and maintain stealth in the network. Social Engineering Packages Cobalt Strike excels in integrating social engineering techniques into its framework. It can generate malicious documents, set up fake websites, and even create malicious Java applets for broader attack vectors, facilitating initial access or spreading laterally across a network. The next tool is Crazy Good. Mimikatz is a notorious utility used to gather credentials from Windows systems. Originally developed for testing the security of password storage mechanisms, it has become a favorite among attackers for its effectiveness in extracting credentials from an operating system. Now we'll get a little technical, so apologize for that, but I promise it will be useful. Pass the hash. Mimikatz allows attackers to perform pass the hash and pass the ticket attacks. These techniques can be used to authenticate to a remote server or service using the underlying NTLM hash of a user's password or Kerberos tickets bypassing the need for the actual password. LSAS dump. Mimikatz can extract credential data from the LSAS, Local Security Authority Subsystem Service, process in memory, which handles the security policy of local accounts on Windows. By dumping the contents of this process, Mimikatz can retrieve plain text passwords, NTLM hashes, and other forms of authentication credentials. Golden Ticket Creation. Using Mimikatz, an attacker with sufficient access can create a golden ticket, which is a ticket granting ticket TGT for the Kerberos authentication protocol that allows unrestricted access to all services. This powerful feature can be used for maintaining long-term access to a compromised network. One secret trick you want to learn is how to stay hidden. You can't ignore the next phase. Phase 5. Covering tracks. In this final phase, hackers remove all signs of their presence and activities from the system. This includes altering or deleting logs that show the hacking activities and any other evidence that might point to their unauthorized actions. One amazing tool I want to highlight here is the SysInternal Suite, developed by Microsoft, is a collection of over 70 different utilities that can be used to accomplish an array of tasks related to system management, troubleshooting, and diagnostic activities under Windows environments. For the purpose of covering tracks, sdelete. This tool is part of the SysInternal Suite designed to securely delete existing files as well as previously deleted data by overrating them. For hackers, this means it can be used to securely delete logs, and other files that might indicate their presence. Process Explorer and Process Monitor. These tools can be used to monitor and review processes, threads, and handle information currently running on the system. Hackers could use these tools to identify and stop services that may log or monitor activities such as security software. Auto Runs. This utility can be used to view which programs are configured to run during system boot up or login. It can be crucial for removing any traces of malware or unauthorized applications that were set to automatically start thus hiding their existence from system administrators. So what happens after you're done with covering your tracks? It's time for phase six, actions on objectives. After securing presence and ensuring stealth, hackers proceed with their primary objectives which could range from data exfiltration, espionage, and launching malware. Each phase of the hacking process requires a blend of technical skills, critical thinking, and specialized tools. You're now on the fast track to becoming a professional hacker. You know the process, the most powerful tools, and even some tricks to get you going. Hope you enjoyed, and happy hacking.